hello viewer welcome back to artistry now we continue with our range of joints we have discussed a number of joints we have discussed the the, the brido joint we have discussed the the, the bath joint now we have another joint that is known as the strongest joint in joinery the strongest joint is known as the dovetail joint the dovetail joint will resemble the shape of a tail of a dove and in that little way then we form a joint that is going to be the strongest joint so here i have a sample or just an illustration of a piece that has been cut uh the the dovetail joint so the the piece we have the dovetailed piece and we have the pins these ones we call we call them the pins so we have the pin and the dovetail and they'll get into each other and then they will form the dovetail joint so this one has been already cut and we have an application of the same this box that we see here so we have different kinds of cutting this dovetail joint so this one will be different from the dovetail joints also used on the box here so here we have a toolbox that we use in our workshop to store tools but uh if i want to use tools uh just a few tools here or there i don't have to carry the whole box and transfer it elsewhere i'll just put them together here some screws some pencil uh, the sliding bevel this one we call it the bevel square or the sliding bevel where we can have different uh, angles on it we can adjust it to get any angle that we want even 90 degrees that we work on the square or rather we get on the square and after everything we store it that way so i also oh sorry i'll, I'll also uh, carry it in my small box here so the application of the dovetail joint is what is uh, put into emphasis on this box because we have a quite a number of joints on this piece uh, on top here we have the brido joint we talked about the brido joint so this one is the corner brido we said if it is, it is coming somewhere in the middle here to form t then it will be a, a t brido but for now in this application it is used as a corner joint it's a corner brido so we have a corner brido joint here we have the dovetail joint here so the tail part is this one it resembles the tail of a dove so one two uh, we have two dovetails and one two three three pins so we have pins uh, here the pins and the dovetails so well joined together and glued then it forms that simple joint and the simple joints put together four of them will make this box so on the the base of this box we have a plywood a piece of plywood then we have another joint at the bottom looking closely at this at that joint uh, it is a cross having joint the cross having joint will have this piece cut into half and the other part also cut half so you remove this uh, that side from this piece and this side from this piece then you put them together glue them then they'll give you that uh, cross having joint here we have a brido joint uh, we ha also have another brido joint up here and then all of them put together uh, they give me a handle to handle the piece as i carry it as well i can put in screws pencil and the and the sliding bevel the tape and every other small item so that i don't carry them in my hand and have a risk of either injuring myself or even losing them so the dovetail joint will be marked for uh, very carefully there has a process of marking it out so much of the time spent here is in marking out the dovetail joint so that uh, the tail is not going to be too slim uh, so it's not going to be too wide remember the strength of tiba is in grains so if the grains are running this way then if we cut them along uh, 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 a lot then we make the end of that uh, of that tail weak so we have to get a formula of cutting 
uh, a slant surface uh, in such a way that we don't compromise the strength uh, and we give the joint a good, uh, a, good a chance or, uh, to get to, to fit tightly. So this one is just rough cut, but once we, w we cut it well, it will be able to form a very good joint which will show uh, smart on this side as well as this side. So this one we call it a Zru. This one, this one, we call it the Zru uh, dovetail joint. Zru in such a, in the sense that we can see the edges, the ed grains on this side. We can as well see the ed grains on this other side. So we have different kinds of dovetail joints. One, one among them is the Zru dovetail joints. Then we have others that we have used in the box. Also uh, ap applied here. Now, if you look closely at this, bo at, at this box, at the end here, from this side, I cannot see the dovetail joints from this side, which is supposed to be my face. From the face here, I can't see the dovetail joints. But from the side, I can see the dovetail joints. So this one, we call it the half blind, half blind or the stopped uh, dovetail joint. The stopped half, uh, dovetail joint will have one face clean, which is supposed to be the face uh, of the box or the drawer. And on the side, it will have the dovetails uh, coming up to a certain point. So it is marked for and then you cut it in such a way that you chisel out on this piece. You chisel out carefully, house the, the, the dovetails and also uh, do fine finish on it. So that is the, uh, the half blind or the stopped uh, dovetail joint. So that's a very good illustration and application of the same. Because if we have it all this way, then uh, it might not give us a very clean face when we need one, just as illustrated in the use here. So you can see the, the tail is not coming up to the end. It's only coming up to a certain point, and then it will leave, uh, it will be recessed for, it will leave this surface clean. So it is still strong, in the sense that the dovetail joint is the strongest joint. And then will have it well finished. So in that box, we have used it for so many years and we have reserved the strength as well as the good appearance. So from the face, you can hardly tell if it's a, if it's a, a dovetail joint. But once you consider now the edge, we have those two views that we use uh, very commonly uh, to, to, to demonstrate or to distinguish one joint from the other. So we have seen a, an application of the dovetail joint in a small box where we have used the through dovetail joint and then we can use the blind half blind or the stopped dovetail joint on a large piece you can as well use it uh, on this small piece the stopped one we can uh, use it for any other uh, special purpose as we illustrate and then uh, we'll be able to get the strongest joints. Even without glue, it can still hold. It can still hold, and we are happy that we are able to achieve that in the workshop. And one among the tools which are very important in making the dovetail joint is the sliding bevel. Some call it also the bevel square, which is still okay. So it has that uh, wing screw, which is used to tighten or to, to hold the blade in place. So you can as well uh, adjust, adjust your, your blade to suit the angle that you want. If you want to measure it on the protractor, you can still do it. But the sliding bevel is used to measure and transfer angles that are not very defined, well defined in the tri-square. Remember the tri-square has uh, the 90 degrees here and it as well has the 45, 45 degree angle, that one. If you place it that way along this edge here, it will give you 45 degrees. And then once you put it this way, it will give you 90 degrees. Now, apart from those two angles, you cannot get any other angle on the, 
on the tri square. So we have the bevel square that now can achieve any other angle. So we use this wide path along the edge, and then we can move this one up to where we, our desired angle is. Then we tighten with the wing screw. Now it can't move. We mark on the side, we mark on the other side, we transfer the angles on the same, uh, the same degrees on various parts. So once we are measuring for the dovetail here, uh, we measure carefully here, and then we transfer, we transfer the angle. So from here, in my marking process, uh, I'll consider that angle. I release it a bit. Consider that angle from up here, exactly there. So I'll mark here. I'll also mark on the other side there. I'll also mark here. I'll as well turn the piece and mark from here. I'll mark also from here. So all those angles I'll transfer with the bevel square. Then after everything, I put it together straight, tighten a little bit on the wing screw, and then place it back on my, on my small toolbox. And then all my tools should get back there. Uh, all my cutting edges, I'll have to protect them. Or still in my box inside here, I have a slot for, for the chisels. I'll, I'll put the chisels there. I'll put the, the portable marking tools there. I'll put my square as well back. And then I'll put my, my pieces on the, on, the, on, the, on the bench up here. So the bench has the well, bench well at the center for the tools. Bench well is bench W E double L, bench well. So I'll put all my tools in the bench well after I am through now with them. I'll place them there in such a way that they cannot injure me. All of them, my box can as well fit there. Uh, let's say we place it on this other side. So all my tools should, should rest along the bench well. And then my pieces of wood up here. And then I can place my box at, at the corner there or even down at the rack down at the rack there. So that is how we organize our bench so that our pieces don't uh, become messed up. When, once we place a metallic tool on these pieces, they are going to have dents, and you're going to have a problem finishing them. So that's an illustration of the use of the dovetail joints. So we now have an idea on how to make and also how to uh, use the dovetail joints. So for now, We'll take a short break and then we'll be back with more stuff. So stay tuned.